Welcome to Saab's uh, annual Grippen seminar where we get an update on the Grippen program and look at what's next around the corner. I am Sebastian Karlsson, Saab's press officer and uh, will host this uh, morning uh, briefing here in Stockholm, Sweden. With us today we have Saab's head of aeronautics uh, uh, Ulf Nilsson and head of the Grippen program Jakob Alkvist who will give the briefings after their briefings there will be a Q&A session so please think of questions also would like to welcome all of you viewing us on the web also on the website you can post questions that we will answer after the briefings Ulf please thank you Sebastian uh, good morning everyone uh, my name is Ulf Nilsson and I'm the head of aeronautics uh, since the first of January this year and before of that, I used to head up the, the Grippen business uh, within aeronautics. And now Jerker is going to come here and give you a, a more detailed briefing about Grippen, is uh, heading up the Grippen side. So let's get started. Looking at the uh, position that we have for Grippen, I must say we have a unique position when we look at the order backlog. We have never had such a strong situation. I mean, looking at this from for last year, of course, with the Swedish order that's the, in the books, and but also the extension of the Czech lease, that's a really big one. And looking a bit further for the future, we have the uh, Brazilian order, of course, that we are looking forward uh, around mid-year uh, to have in our, in our order books. So I think we have a unique position there with a strong program that we can move forward with, both when it comes to development and when it comes to production that gives us a unique position in the marketplace here. And also I think it's worth mentioning that we have uh, a good upgrade coming for the CD platform and that will continue in the future. I'll be back to the strategy around the grip and, and how we work with the, our continuously upgrade of the system a, a bit later. And I have to also mention Brazil of course, that's been a game changer for us. It really has been Grippen uh, looking for a market has changed from uh, a market looking for Grippen. So that's really uh, a really big change for us. We really moved up from the junior league to the big leagues now when it comes to exporting uh, this sort of uh, fighter systems in the world market. And also we have the flexibility with the Grippen system and that's been proven with, with Brazil. Here we can perform a solution for, for a, a geographically really big country that has specific needs and we can also provide solutions for, for other air forces that have totally different needs. So it is a proof of the flexibility for, for our pro program and our product here. And technology transfer is of course a big part of this uh, and we see this as an opportunity uh, when it comes to technology transfer and we have a lot of good opportunities here when it comes to Brazil. There's really a qualified industry to work with so we can create good opportunities for the future and create new business both around Grippen and other programs within, within the Saab portfolio in a good way here. <coughs> but then looking at the program we have the um, Swedish order with the 60 Grippens and of course we're looking forward to the Brazil order that gives us the backbone of the Grippen program moving forward. And also uh, it's worth mentioning in here the time schedule. We started with the time schedule that was meeting the Swedish customers need and then that was accelerated to meet the needs for the Swiss customer. And after the referendum, when the Swiss customer chosen to not go forward with the procurement at this moment, we have, uh, have discussions and negotiations with the Swedish customer and adopted the time schedule back to the Swedish uh, request. So now we have uh, the first deliveries 2019 for the Swedish customer. So we're moving forward for that. And also, of course, we are looking into the opportunities here uh, to uh, have synergies between Sweden and Brazil moving forward to see how we can create a, a better overall solution for both the customers. So that we'll have to come back to, that's ongoing discussions at the moment. And uh, looking at this, I really like to stress that we have a new philosophy around how we want to move forward with the development and, and then the production of the Grippen system. Uh, before, there's been a lot of talk about generation. We started out with a national focus, moving to the CD with an international focus. But now moving forward, we see that we can do this in smaller steps where we develop capability uh, strictly requested by the customers. And we can package that in different solutions moving forward. So we can take and benefit from what we have done with the demonstrator and what we're doing with the Grip and E program. And we can pull from that and develop the CD platform if they need deliveries in the near future. 
and if they have a, re a need for extended range, for an example, an internal fuel, we'll go for the Grip and E platform. So, so here really we have a big flexibility here to, to, to work with this in small steps in a different way. So we prefer to talk about a multi-role fighter instead of next generation and so on. This is uh, going to be something different, I think, uh, from moving on from this. Looking at our focus areas uh, when it comes to grip and within aeronautics, of course it's always important to deliver on our commitments, uh, to have a strong commitment here and show that we actually do what we are promised. But also I think it's worth mentioning we're taking a giant leap forward when it comes to setting the way we do development and production around the grip and system with the grip and E. And just to give you a feel of what I mean about that is that previously it took us about 15 to 20 years to go from a conceptual a design to a delivery. Now we can do the same thing in five to six years. And you can imagine what that means when it comes to saving money uh, and also to be able to deliver to the customer very quickly and fulfill their needs. Because looking backwards, five years ago, who could uh, guess at the situation we have around the world today with Ukraine and so on. So we have to have a flexibility here to adapt to new needs for our customers. And this is really what makes us stand out from uh, the competition. They are still at the performance around 15, 20 years when we can talk about five, six years. So that's uh, a big advantage for us moving forward as well. And also building on the future, we keep pushing here the technology and we can see things are changing rapidly. We don't see any signs on the, the pace going down when it comes to technology development, uh, especially around the uh, sensors area. It's moving forward really quickly. And here we have an excellent sensor suite when it comes to performance with the grip and E system and early warning and so on. Uh, and that's really uh, crucial to keep that up. And here we wor work with our R&D programs and also have the strategy to pull from that in small steps. So when we move forward in our R&D programs, we can benefit from new technology. When it's mature enough, we can package it and deliver it within the grip and platform to our customers. Again, it's more an evolution in small steps, but we can take the beneficial from the development and technology move forward. Uh, and also, uh, it's the development of the uh, business side here. Uh, we have a important focus, I think, to deliver a complete package. We talk a lot, a lot about the aircraft when we talk about export to Brazil, for an example. But we need to remember that the aircraft is about 20-25% of the business when you do an export. And the rest is support systems, it's ground systems, it's education, it's spares and so on. So it's an overall solution that needs to be complete uh, for the customer. And here we see opportunities to develop the business around this complete solution. And also looking at the life cycle span of the program. We're talking about 30 years here, 30 year commitment. And of course there's opportunities to develop the business over the 30 years. So that's something that we are pushing harder moving forward as well with the Gripen system. When it comes to follow on business, the support business, that side, uh, side of the complete life cycle. So here we see a good opportunity moving forward as well. And, and to carry all this, of course, we need to work with the organization. I mean, Brazil is going to push this even further. We need to be more global to be able to manage and support uh, that sort of solutions. But also, uh, with the lead times we are talking about, we need to start and develop the new generation of leaders uh, within the aeronautics business. And we have started that journey now because it's important to, to uh, carry on and, and uh, hand over the, the, the knowledge that's been built up over 75 years in our business to have continuously develop our leadership here. And here we also have a strong focus on uh, increasing the number of women in the management position because we have seen when we have team with the teams with a good balance, we get a better result. And that's what's driving us. We need to improve all the time. We can never relax. We need to keep pushing. And we see this is a good thing for us. So, so we really encourage uh, women to take uh, a management position within Saab. And also we want more women to, to, to come to us uh, and seek employment. And more women to go to the engineering schools and universities as well. Because there is an unbalance today. And we see this as a really good thing moving forward as well. So that's a bit of a flavor around this. 
And also I'd like to stress again the, the evolution we have around the uh, development and production and the capability we have here. Another, another thing we changed around this philosophy is the uh, verification and validation when we test the, the program moving forward. Now we moved a lot of the testing and verification to an early stage when we work with simulation and models and do that upfront instead of waiting to have test aircrafts and fly them and then find all the difficulties. And this means that we can sort it out in an early stage, save money, save time, and also create a better solution jointly with the customer. They can sit down without an engineers and get a feel for uh, where we are going and this is, was this what they were looking for, is that what we meant? It's a really complex system. It's about 70,000 drawings in, in a fighter system for an aircraft. So you can imagine how complex it is. You can never figure it out all from the very start. So this is also a really strong point in this. And doing this, we actually reduced the number of test flights with 40% uh, moving forward. So that's also to give you an, uh, some idea uh, what this means. So we have really taken a big leap forward here uh, in our capability. Looking at the global footprint, uh, I mentioned before it's important to, to work with the complete solution. And I think this is our strong point when it comes to export. You need to sit down with the customer, you need to understand the customer's needs when it comes to operational requirements. I mean, it's all about performance when you talk with the fighter system. There's no second or third place. You have to always have to be in first place. So we have to have the performance in place, no question about that. And also, it's building a relation with the customer to see what they need for, for, from a national point of view. Then we come into the technology transfer to see how we can build from our technology an innovation engine, as we call it. That's the value we add when it comes to technology transfer and build from that uh, around defense systems, secu civil security systems and civil solutions. And then we can create something jointly with investments within the country. And also have a good financial package, of course, a solution. Different customers want different solutions. And here we also have a really good flexibility to tailor this complete solution for the customer's need. We have lease solutions, we have government to government solutions, we have business to government solutions. So we can really do all of the different uh, versions here to, to, to tailor that to the needs. And again, we have the 30 year commitment when it comes to support. So it's important to see this as a complete package. Uh, and looking at the marketplace, we have a business case here where we can talk about 300 aircraft and the potential to sell up to 450 aircraft. And we already have uh, around 100 aircraft on order of these 300. So I think we've done a, a good job so far, but we need to keep pushing here, of course. And the interest on the market is uh, bigger and greater than ever. So we see good opportunities here to have customers in the near future for the Gripen system as well. And also it's about 10-15% of the accessible market, these 3-450 aircraft. And looking at our track record, how are we doing? We actually have achieved uh, winning 50% of the procurements that has been finished and ended up in a contract. So I think we're doing quite well in that respect as well. And also in the market now we, we see an opportunity to have a regional fo focus uh, as you can see here on, on the map as well. South East Asia, of course, we have uh, Central Europe, we have South Africa and Africa a bit further down the road, maybe. So this is something like we like to develop our business around. And I think that's uh, something that uh, Jarki can uh, tell you a bit more about. So thank you for that. I'll be back soon. Thank you. Um, I think it's important in, in the marketplace. Uh, we have today um, a good footprint in, in many areas uh, in the world um, and we want to build upon that. Uh, and, and we want to look at on the market in, in regional terms more than, than specific countries. Our, we, we want to utilize our, our presence, uh, for instance, in, in Central Europe. We see in Central Europe that we have already Czech and Hungary as gripping customers there, uh, but we also see that several uh, Central European countries will replace their aging fleets of, of uh, mainly Russian aircraft. <coughs> And uh, we, we definitely see that Gripen uh, is, is a good alternative for, for all those uh, replacements. 
and we have an interest from Slovakia. Slovakia is, is in, in negotiations with Sweden uh, on a replacement program for their uh, Russian aircrafts. Uh, we also see other countries like Bulgaria now showing a greater interest uh, in, in, in Gripen. Uh, they need replacement quick and through the CD, the Gripen CD, we can offer uh, solutions in the near term for those countries. Uh, so, so Grip and CD will be important when it comes to finding uh, solutions within the next two to five years. Uh, so definitely, as Ulf mentioned earlier, Grip and CD, we will continue to, to market and sell and develop uh, for the market. If we look at the other regions where we have a footprint, um, Asia for instance, where we have customer in, in Thailand, uh, we also see their growing interest uh, from other uh, Asian uh, countries. So that's something we're, we're focusing on uh, in, in terms of, of regional presence. Uh, of course, we've already seen, uh, I would like to call it the Brazil effect, uh, growing interest in, in uh, South America from the neighboring countries to Brazil. Uh, a lot of them are showing an interest and they are in pretty much the same situation. They need to replace their current fleets uh, pretty soon, and that's within two to five years. Um, Africa, of course, we have a footprint in South Africa through the, the, the grip and customer and our, our Saab presence in, in uh, South Africa. Uh, my view is that Africa is not a near-term market for us. It will probably be five to ten years before we see other uh, opportunities in, in Africa. But, but Africa is, is, is growing and, and in developing and the economies are improving, so there is definitely a, a good opportunity for us even, even there. And through this, with the growing uh, customer base in the, in the regions, um, we're also looking at establishing uh, grip and hubs in, in the various regions. Uh, to enable uh, aftermarket sales, uh, as we mentioned earlier, um, and, and through providing services uh, for the customers uh, in those regions. That's something we are considering for the future. I think it, it's worthwhile um, reflecting a bit over why, why is, is grip and competitive in all these markets. Um, we, it's important to emphasize that even if we're developing a an, an next generation Gripen with the Gripen E and, and, and so on, uh, to already today um, the Gripen system is a very capable system. And as we mentioned earlier, we continuously upgrade that system. Development is, is ongoing, uh, even for the CD version. So through adding uh, new weapons, new sensors, uh, we continuously uh, improve the capability even of the existing Gripen system, the CD version. So that's of course important, that's the, that's the product capability, but our, our product is, is much more than that. Uh, the product also uh, provides sovereignty for the country that chooses uh, Gripen. Uh, we offer, which many of our competitors don't, we offer complete ownership and control. Um, and and there is, there is very few, if any, third-party restrictions when, when someone buys Gripen. And uh, I think the most important is, which we've shown in many occasions, that uh, buying a Gripen also provides an opportunity for the country to develop the, the national skills and, and uh, industry base, uh, which is something that we see a growing interest for, uh, which a Gripen uh, purchase actually offers. Uh, not the least sustainability. Um, we, uh, we want to emphasize, we have been doing it in the past and we, we will continue to emphasize the low life cycle cost, which becomes more and more important uh, for any customer. Uh, the acquisition price is one thing, but operating a system over 30 to 40 years, is, is, it's very, it becomes very important to, to make sure that the, the overall uh, maintenance cost, operating cost and so on, is kept low. And, and we know that we have a unique position here. Uh, we know that no other competitor can, can uh, show a, a similar uh, low life cycle cost as we do. So, and this is going to be one of the important feature that we will keep on talking about and a uh, key advantage on the market for us. 
and also the fact that we have a development program for the next generation Gripen, but also for the for the existing versions of Gripen. Uh, it's it's more or less only us that has got an ongoing development program besides uh, the Joint Strike, Fri Strike Fighter program. And we, we also will uh, make use of the ongoing development on the next generation, but also the ongoing development of, of the CD version. And we'll feed uh, experiences from those development programs into each other. So, so the product will gain from, from the ongoing development all the time. Brief update on uh, where we are on the Gripen program. Um, Gripen CD, as I mentioned, continuous upgrades and, and enhancements of the, the current uh, system is ongoing. And we will uh, introduce uh, the so-called MS-20 uh, upgrade uh, for the first customer this year. And, and uh, that will continue to be introduced in, in uh, the existing customer's fleet over time. MS-20 provides uh, a, a large uh, capability step uh, with new weapons, new sensors, uh, new functionality in the aircraft. Um, and again, the concept of upgrading, upgrading the software and thereby providing increased capability is, is important and an important feature for the Gripen system. One other uh, important thing for the Gripen CD program is that <coughs> One of our existing customers, the Czech Republic, decided to, after 10 years of operation, uh, extend uh, the lease arrangement for another 12 years. And again, again, another good example of a happy customer that decides to, to go on with, this, with the system, which is for us very important, of course, to, to, to show that the customers are pleased with, with our uh, system and decide to, to extend uh, their programs with Gripen. I think it's also <coughs> very encouraging to see that uh, our customers are using the system um, in operations, in, in sharp missions uh, all over the world. And, and I think it's, it's very encouraging to see what they have achieved with very few aircraft. All of these customers, Thai Air Force, Hung Hungary Air Force and Czech Air Force, have 12 to 14 aircraft in their, in their fleet. And, and they uh, and they achieve amazing things uh, with the Grippens, with with outstanding availability and so on. So so that's we're very something we we're very proud of. Uh, that shows that we are on the right way with with this system. <coughs> Grippeny, uh, of course, is is our main task at the moment, and uh, um, I'll get back to to some slides later. Uh, to show you that production is ongoing now of, of uh, the first aircraft. Um, we have been running uh, the development program uh, for some time in, in, a, in a demo prototype aircraft uh, where we test the new sensors, the new avionics. We have performed uh, IRST, the infrared search and track uh, sensor. Uh, we've started testing that. Uh, we are testing the new, uh, the new radar that goes into to grip an E. Uh, and as you can see, we've performed quite a few uh, test flights already uh, with the, the various subsystems for Grip and E. Uh, but of course, um, it's not only flight testing. We're doing a lot of testing uh, in, in rigs and simulators on the ground. And through our, our model-based uh, design and development uh, philosophy, we're able to do a lot of the testing in, in simulators, la uh, laptop simulators uh, and so on, desktop simulators. Uh, model-based system engineering and, and model-based design, those two key uh, elements of our development philosophy. And, and <coughs> we're al already now seeing uh, the benefits of that. Uh, so, so we believe that for the future we can save time and, and cost in our programs through using those new uh, design philosophies. Uh, Gripen for Brazil is still in its early uh, stages. Um, we, it's important to note that um, it's not only 36 Gripen. Brazil will be the first customer for the two-seat version of the next generation. So, so that development program is included in, in, <coughs> in, the, in the development for Brazil. And of course for Brazil, as, as mentioned earlier, the industrial partnership program is, is uh, 
is extensive and, and uh, it's still, I'll get back a bit more to this uh, soon. Uh, but <coughs> definitely Gripen for Brazil is, is uh, as mentioned, uh, a game changer for us and, and something that we are preparing for now. Uh, Just a few examples of, of what it looks like uh, in the in the Gripen E production. Um, as mentioned, model-based design, model-based definition, as it's called when it's on the, on the on the floor in in the workshops, uh, completely free of paper drawings. This is what it looks like in in the workshops today. Uh, computer screens is what the uh, the people who, who builds the Gripen work with. And, and you can imagine what what difference that makes, both in terms of, of a new way of working, but also all the benefits around that. When, if something is not right from the beginning, changing it in, in a computer environment is so much easier than having to go back and change all the paper drawings and release the new drawings uh, to be able to, to work and build the aircraft. Um, this is actually probably the first pictures of, of the ongoing uh, grip and E production. And um, we, we thought it's a good idea now to, to start to show uh, what it looks like. Uh, this is the first fuselage sections being uh, put together in the workshops. And I think this is a good proof that our design philosophy with the model-based design and so on works because now when those uh, two fuselage parts are put together in the workshop, they fit immediately, whereas previously we would have to do some adaptations, changes. Uh, so so this, we believe this shows that we're on the right, right track. Again, this will, will, will make it, it possible for us to, to save time and money in the program uh, when, when you build something that fits from the, fir from, from the first time. It's very important. <coughs> A bit more about uh, Brazil. Again, want to emphasize that this is the, the our, our largest export order ever. Um, we were chosen because we fulfill all the Brazilian Air Force requirements. And it's also fair to say that we were chosen because uh, we, we are committed to uh, an extensive technology transfer and industrial cooperation program, which will provide Brazilian industry with knowledge and it will enable uh, Brazilian industry to, to grow. Uh, and I think it's important also to note that an aircraft that was originally designed for a small aircraft like Sweden uh, is also uh, a good aircraft system for a large country like Brazil. Uh, so, so there's no limitations in where uh, the Gripen system can be used. Again, uh, important to emphasize that uh, the Brazil contract is for a complete system, as mentioned earlier. Not only aircraft, um, uh, complete logistics package uh, with maintenance systems, uh, logistic services, uh, field service representatives, uh, complete training, training of pilots, training of, of technicians. Uh, support, various support systems, ground support equipment, uh, spares. Uh, and it is also adapted to cater for specific Brazilian requirements. So again, shows our flexibility. Uh, we can we can take on uh, customer specific requirements onto a platform that is generic and adapt it uh, for for the customer needs, uh, which is one of the key features for Gripen. I think it's worth spending a few minutes on the industrial cooperation package. Um, it includes, as I said, an, an extensive transfer of, of technology, uh, education and on-the-job training. We will see approximately 100 Brazilian engineers with their families uh, coming to, to Linköping already late this year uh, to start their training uh, and to come into both development and production uh, and to, in our uh, facilities, uh, do on-the-job training. Uh, we're in the process of, of preparing for that now, both within the company when it comes to, to providing uh, workspace for those engineers coming in, uh, but not the least also finding, finding uh, houses and, and apartments and so on in Linköping for, for all the families coming along. Um, 
when they've been in Linköping for, for, for some years, they will go back and be able to start building uh, the industrial industry capability there together with us. And they will, they will work with, uh, Brazilian industry will work with uh, grip and NG airframe and systems development. They will also be involved in manufacturing, extensively invo involved in manufacturing, both in, in terms of, of uh, parts manufacturing, but also in, in, in an assembly line in Brazil. So uh, we, will, we will see uh, a second source of, of, uh, of manufacturing the Gripen uh, in Brazil. They will have a full capability to, to manufacture Gripens in Brazil for the future. We'll also uh, perform the, the specific Brazilian flight testing in Brazil. Um, all of this will, will create a, a future fighter capability uh, within Brazilian industry, which was, of course, one of the key elements of, of uh, the Brazilian choice of Gripen. Uh, Embraer is one of our key partners in, in Brazil. There are several others that we will partner with uh, to, to achieve all of this, of course. But Embraer is, is, is of course, the, the, the biggest one. Uh, which has uh, got a long history of, of uh, aircraft manufacturing. Then, by that, I'll hand over to Ulf to, co to conclude. Thank you. I think looking at the situation now that we've been talking about here, here with the Gripen, we have an excellent uh, situation for the future. We have a really strong uh, commitment, and as I mentioned, we developed the uh, methodology and the engine, uh, innovation and technology en engine around performing development and production, we're really taking a leap forward. I think that's really one of our strong points. And also that we have the coexistence between the different platforms, that we can step by step keep on developing the capabilities and doing a tailor-made solution for our customers. That's also a new and a good strong strategy moving forward. And also the market outlook. It's stronger than ever. We have uh, our order bookings where we have a really strong backbone in our program with the Swedish and now coming with a Brazilian customer. And moving forward there, we see some excellent opportunities for, for growth as we move forward. And also the progress of the program itself. Uh, I think it's a proof that the concept works and we can do this in a good way. So, so I think uh, we have a good future here for the Gripen system. And we have a really strong portfolio with the investments we've done and then the customers has done in the program as well. So uh, thank you for that. And now over to Sebastian. Uh, before we open up for questions, I, I like uh, to ask you, Ulf, if you could elaborate a bit on, you said it today it takes five to six years to develop a new aircraft before 10 to 15. Can you uh, describe the process, what has happened and, and the, the factors that it took us there? Yes, of course. I mean, first you start with the conceptual design, and, and as I mentioned before, and, and as uh, Jarke talked about, it's all about the model-based design that we can simulate and build it in a computer environment instead of having to uh, do this in steps with drawings. Before we did it in three steps. Uh, first we had the design phase when we did everything, the drawings, and then we had everything prepared for production, you did it a second time, and then you had to do it a third time for the maintenance uh, of the aircraft. Now we do it one time up front and we reuse it all the way through the process when we do this. And this takes away about two thirds, uh, both when it comes to cost and when it comes to time. Uh, and it gives us a totally different flexibility. So that's, I think these are the main things around this. And also it means, as Jerke mentioned, that everything fits good when it comes to production. Before in production, we took 180 aircraft to reach the optimum to, to produce uh, and assembly an aircraft. Now it takes us 30 aircraft to reach that level. So it's uh, also a significant change and a big leap forward there in the technology and the way we set it up when it comes to production. So it's both development and production that has changed w with a quite a big leap forward there. Thanks. Do we have any questions in the room? Uh, we get the microphone uh, up uh, here in the front, and then we have a new. One second. Uh, thank you. My name is Diki. I'm from the Jakarta Post. Uh, of when you mentioned about uh, how SAP encouraging more women to work as a as an engineer to make a balance. What do you mean by that? Can you elaborate further? <coughs> for well, our experience when we see we have a, a good balance 
in the teams, uh, for example, where you, you, you go do to do a design solution. If you have a good mix, we, we really do see a, a different sort of uh, environment is created when you have different angles to approach problems. We have a different mindset, we come from different angles, and this will drive the solutions to become better as an overall solution. We see uh, we achieve better results. That's a, that's the bottom line of it, and that's why we uh, encourage it. Next question, Stefan Sederberg, SCB. Uh, Jarke, you said that uh, in East Europe there's a need for new aircraft within two years, and in other South uh, America within five years. That must uh, mean that there uh, should be some decision fairly soon. I said the Swedish government is in, in negotiations with Slovakia, for instance, uh, on a contract. Uh, so we, we are hoping to, to come to a conclusion on that actually during this year already. And other, other parts of Eastern Europe, is that as imminent? As a Maybe not as imminent as that, but uh, I was, as I said, uh, Bulgaria is now showing a great interest and, and we know uh, that they have a limited time left to fly their Russian fighters. So. We expect them to to have to to replace their their fleets within maybe two to three years. And then a uh, question on the price different with the new C version and the E version. What what kind of price different will there be for this aircraft? It's always, it's always very difficult to talk about price differences because you can hardly ever compare the price between. Uh, selling to, to the customers because they, they are so different. Uh, the packages look very different. Uh, the Brazil case is, is, a, is a very comprehensive package, whereas other customers require uh, less comprehensive packages. So, so it's very diffi difficult to compare the prices. <coughs> and also on the label, you're talking Brazil, uh, Gripen NG, and, and in Sweden, Gripen E. What is uh, the main difference between NG and E? The, the NG is the next generation of Gripen. The Swedish customer has denominated its version of the aircraft Gripen E. Uh, so that's up. That's really basically up to the customers to to decide how they denominate the the system. And on the technology transfer, can you say how much of uh, the value of Brazil is in the technology transfer area? We can't talk about about numbers in in this case, but uh, but as you understand, uh, when when we talk about uh, transferring uh, technology to, to over 100 Brazilian engineers to transfer uh, production capability and so on. Uh, of course, it's, it's significant uh, money involved. And the last <laughs> question. Uh, the the cancel of the uh, agreement between Sweden and uh, Saudi Arabia yesterday, will that have an impact on your business? I, I think for... Uh, for our area, when it comes to grip, and that's not the market that we have targeted uh, for us, so we don't see it have an impact uh, for, for the grip. Okay, any further questions in the room? Uh, we have uh, one here in the white shirt. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, I'm Amar Bon from Antonis Agency Indonesia. You said before that uh, Brazil is full scale cooperations model. Uh, I would like maybe Ulf can explain this to me. It's about hub and industrial partnership. Can you explain us more, please? Thank you. Yes, yeah, so looking at the uh, uh, technology transfer, as I said before, we see this as a good opportunity to, to build a, a partnership and a relation between uh, Saab, Sweden, and the industry within the country. For example, working with Embraer. Uh, we are now jointly setting up uh, development infrastructure so we can continue to develop the two-seater, which is a new thing coming with Brazil. And from that, they can come to Sweden, of course, first engineer, as uh, Jarke mentioned, to have some training first, more of a school training, formal training, and then moving on to on-the-job training. Uh, and after that, we can move uh, everything to Brazil. For example, the development of the two-seater continue there, and we will support the, the Brazilian engineers in a good way there. And, and after that, they can continue uh, to complete the development. And from that, of course, they build up a capability around fighter systems to go further and develop their own systems in the future and jointly with us as well. That's how we see it. It's an opportunity to create new business. We have one question 
down there. Have the microphone. Uh, hello. Hello. I don't know if this is where. Okay, Jonathan Feldman, Stockholm University. Uh, one of the incentives for arms exports is the uh, economies of scale. Um, you mentioned this. I didn't fully understand this figure about the um, 30 and 180. Uh, is that is that the threshold for production? Is that uh, what I, you meant? I can explain it. We always talked about these learning curves traditionally in production. So to, to go down to the right level on the learning curve where you have uh, an optimum in assembling an aircraft, it took 180 aircraft to reach that point before. But with a new setup with the uh, model-based design, we have a better fit and everything. So we can achieve that a lot earlier at, uh, after 30 aircrafts instead of 180. The design. Sorry? T so the threshold is to perfect the design. Yeah. And uh, also has to the break even uh, changed so that now you break even with uh, producing fewer planes? Yes, and of course you can reach uh, more conf cost efficiency uh, and better uh, profitability earlier uh, at an earlier stage in the program with a setup like this. That's one of the, the benefits of it. Uh, and then one last question. Um, what are the concerns now in Sweden is employment? Uh, so there was some coverage about Ericsson. Uh, how much, how will the deal with Brazil affect employment? And how has employment uh, changed over the last five years in the Gripen program? I would say that we have grown. I mean, looking in the rear mirror for review, uh, for, for a short moment, uh, we have seen a growth when it comes to employment within Saab, uh, both in Sweden and in other countries. And we will continue to see that. We see uh, Brazil is a, uh, a good way moving forward. It will create more jobs uh, in Sweden and it will also create more jobs within Brazil. So I think it's really a win-win situation. We're not taking away anything from Sweden and moving to Brazil or the other way around. We're growing it in the both the areas from this. So, so it's a beneficial win-win situation. We have a couple of questions on the web. Uh, yeah, uh, this first question comes from a person called Puto Teresa. Uh, if we order the Gripen NG for Indonesian Air Force, uh, when can they be delivered? That's the first question. And the second is uh, about the acquisition price and the cost for ILS. I think we for, for, for Gripen NG, we, we have uh, two customers today, the Swedish um, program and the Brazil program. Uh, and of course, that will, that will uh, uh, be be something that that will have to take be taken into consideration when when looking at possibilities to to deliver uh, to Indonesia, uh, but of course uh, I think a grip and NG solution can be delivered to Indonesia, uh, let's say starting 2022 23. Uh, but another another interesting thing that maybe should be considered in that case is is uh, doing like many other countries are considering uh, a lead-in uh, solution with uh, Grip and CD, which we can deliver much earlier than that. Let's say within the the next two three years. And there were a question about the price. I don't think we, we at this stage we can talk about prices because, it, as I said earlier, it depends uh, so much on on what the package will be, how many aircraft, and so on. And and uh, uh, we don't talk about um, prices for individual aircraft because that's never applicable anyway. Further questions on the web? Yeah, uh, we have a second question from Indonesia. It's from uh, Bambang Sasanka from of uh, Salopos Media Group. Um, for a tropical country like Indonesia with extreme heat, sudden change in weather conditions, a vast archipelago, uh, what can Gripen offer in terms of air superi superiority, air defense and air patrol? First of all, uh, Gripen is designed for and, and is proven uh, within similar uh, conditions as, as mentioned. So. Um, I think uh, Gripen can definitely, as, as described earlier, uh, provide that with, with an extensive uh, uh, weapons and sensor suite. Uh, and, and it all depends on uh, what the customer's requirements are in terms of that. Uh, but again, the system is flexible uh, and we can adapt it to, to any customer needs. We have some more questions, I think, from the web. Yeah, um, from Fernando Nakagawa. Uh, from Newswire Agencia Estado Brasil. 
asking uh, the Brazilian government announced a comprehensive fiscal consolidation program with spending cuts in several areas. Are you afraid of any change to the order of the 36 Group and NG for Brazil in terms of deadlines or number of aircraft? Uh, we haven't had any signs uh, that there will be uh, changes in the Brazil program. On the contrary, it's moving forward in a good way uh, according to plan when it comes to uh, approving the financial solution, when it comes to approving the export licensing and so on. So, no, we don't, don't see any change there. Uh, another Brazil question. Uh, there are some reports that Brazil needs additional 100 fighter jets in the coming decades. Are there any negotiations going, going on for any additional order from Brazil? Uh, not at this moment. Uh, now we are fully committed to, to uh, get the current contract uh, to become f effective. And after that, of course, we need to uh, deliver the, the first contract. And then uh, we will see what will happen. But it's all up to the customer here to, to see what the requirements and the needs are for the future. But of course, uh, it will be interesting to see uh, where it goes. Any other questions in the room? We have one here up front. The microphone is on its way. Hi, my name is Vanessa from the Jakarta Globe. Um, I'd just like to go back to um, Saab's uh, new sort of concept of regional hubs. Um, you mentioned, you talked a little bit about um, South America and Central Euro Europe and as well as East Europe. Um, could you, uh, what about Asia? Because um, you d do have presence in Bangkok and now Indonesia. Um, could you talk a little bit more about where do you see that market going and also taking into context uh, your new outlook on creating more regional hubs? Uh, does that mean you hope to set up uh, the presence that you have in each country, you hope to export from that country also? Um, for example, if you set up a hub in Indonesia, you have hope to export grip and say when you so sell it to the Philippines. Is that sort of um, the idea uh, going ahead? If you could talk a little bit more about that. Thank yes, you. Yes, yes. Um, as I said, we we are considering. We're looking at at setting up grip and hubs in in the in the various regions in the world. But I think one one key element to that is that uh, we need to see a growing customer base. Uh, th there needs to be sufficient uh, uh, aircraft in operations. But w what we're looking at is is maintenance hubs, training hub training hubs, um, and also as in Brazil, uh, manufacturing. Uh, so that that is definitely something that is part part of the consideration as the customer base grows in the regions. So, so uh, Southeast Asia is definitely not uh, out of that uh, equation. It's definitely being considered as well. And also I think it's important to look at the industry within the country and see that you have a good match there. Uh, what, what to build and what to develop around. So it so will be a win-win situation as well to grow from. Further questions? Any more questions in the room? We have one from Stefan. Is stealth, ca stealth capability is an important feature of an aircraft, and and what what's happening in uh, Grip and NG in in the stealth area? I think that's that's a very good question because here we have a different. Uh, design philosophy when it comes to the Gripen. We have a, what we call a balanced design uh, where we can uh, continuously develop all the capabilities around the aircraft. We don't f foresee going into a stealth design uh, with our programs. I mean, it's all about uh, measures and countermeasures. So looking at the sensor suite that we have today and the technology that's going to be uh, available in the future, uh, stealth is going to be uh, less and less important. We know today with low frequency radar, there's always an opportunity to already to, d to identify stealth aircrafts. So we see uh, our setup is in a good, good way to move forward. If you go for a stealth design, you will have some limitations when it comes both to flight performance and, and to other areas as well. So it's a very specific design for a specific mission. We would like to have a balanced design where we have a true multi-role fighter and keep on developing the capabilities around that. So, so technology, I mean, it's measures and countermeasures. Now the, the radars are catching up. We have one question down in the back. Hello, Martin Lindgren, direct. I have a follow-up question to the Brazilian web question. 
uh, if we assume that Brazil uh, needs 100 more Gripen aircraft after a few years, would they be able to manufacture them all by themselves and Saab does not making any money uh, from, from, from those additional aircrafts? As, as we see it, it will always be a, be a business between Brazilian government and, and Saab. Uh, what we will do is, of course, utilize uh, the, the, the capability that's, that's, that have been built up in, in Brazil when it comes to, to manufacture. And, and to me, it's not clear that all those fighters will be manufactured in Brazil. Significant part of them, yes, but I think we will need to utilize bo both uh, manufacturing uh, sites there, both Sweden and Brazil, for, for such a big program. I also think it's part of the partnership that we are forming with Embraer. And of course, we will do this sort of business jointly. Now it will be beneficial for both parties. Uh, could you please remind me, how, how many of the 36 aircraft will be manufactured in Brazil and how many will be built in, in Sweden? Or is it more some components will be built in Brazil and some components here? It's a gradual build-up where, where, to start with, uh, components will be manufactured in Brazil uh, and in Sweden, and, and the initial uh, initial aircraft of the of the 36 will will all be uh, manufactured in Sweden. But gradually, as the Brazilian capability grows, uh, the aircraft will be manufactured. Final assembly will be done in 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 Brazil, and and. Uh, maybe 10 to 15 aircraft of those will be uh, finally assembled in, in Brazil. Okay, thanks. Do we have any more questions uh, on the web? And then we have some more in the room. Uh, yeah, uh, we have a qu question from um, a student, Shell, is asking, when will the rollout of Group and E take place? We're looking at the program today, uh, as you saw on, on, the, on the slides earlier, production is, way, is well underway and, and uh, uh, rollout of the aircraft is, is scheduled for, for 2016. Yeah, and, and also, I mean, here we, we said earlier uh, during the briefings here that we have uh, changed the uh, delivery schedule according to the Swedish customers' needs to start uh, 2019. That also means that we have adopted the, the overall program with the um, milestones, of course, with the pi payment milestones. And of course, we follow the plan here and do the work according to, to the payment milestones. Uh, we don't do anything in, in advance. We, we follow the program uh, and meet the customer's uh, requirements here when it comes to planning as well. So we have one more question on the web. Yeah. Um, do we see any cooperation with other companies in the future in the fighter jet area, uh, like this cooperation with uh, Boeing for the trainer? Yeah, I think it, I think it's always interesting to look in uh, to what opportunities are out there when it comes to, to uh, collaboration with, with different companies. And I think uh, going forward in the future, there is going to be a need to find partners uh, to keep on developing fighter systems. I mean, it, it, it's uh, always going to uh, cost a su substantial amount of money to develop these sort of systems. Uh, and uh, looking at a country like Sweden, uh, we need partners to be able to have a future and do this in a good way. So, uh, of course, we're looking into that, but no, we don't ne really need to go into any specific details around that. But it's part of our roadmap and it's part of our R&D program to be in the different uh, demo programs, development programs, both in Europe and internationally. We have one question uh, here. Per uh, Lundin, uh, is uh, command and control system uh, an option in your offering or is it a separate business? No, I think here, uh, here we have uh, another opportunity to, to look at the complete Saab portfolio when we come to customer. And one example, I think, is uh, Thailand, where we did uh, more of a complete solution. We have the, the uh, weapon system around Gripen, but we also have developed the link uh, to the area uh, and also for uh, air to, to ground and air to the, to the Navy, so an air to air links. So it's, we can provide a complete, more complete defense solution if that is what the customer requires. And also we can adapt into the systems that they are operating today and work with that to build an overall solution. 
But I think also specifically on the command and control, it's often a national a national asset, and the and the customer often wants to keep control of that themselves. But in the cases where they decide so, we can of course offer that because we've got that in our product portfolio. I won't. Yeah, it's about interoperability between uh, Grip and NG, you said before, offered to Indonesia with our existing fighters now, and also about the surveillance system and the radars. We operate F-16, Sukhoi, Hawks, T-50 from Korea now, and also the radars from Plessy and Thompson ASF. How can you interoperability, uh, how about the interoperability amongst them with the uh, grip and NG you offered and also about the financing program uh, based on the Brazilian case what about the composition between SAP and Brazilian government and companies thank you Gripen is is uh, designed that that doesn't only apply to Grip and NG. That also applies to Grip and CD to 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 operate in a, in an environment where it it <laughs> operates together with other units of a defense force. That's that's part of the design uh, feature for Grip and that it should be capable of doing that. And the main feature there is is data link. And uh, depending on on what the customer's requirements are, we are are uh, able to to integrate. Uh, a data link that uh, the customer decides, uh, which we've done in, in many cases. That's one of the of the things which which will always be customer specific in the grip and system a data link or a communication system. Uh, so there's no there's no real generic communication system. It's all based on on customer demands and and so so that we can we can do and we're quite used to do that as well. Yeah, looking at the financing, there are always opportunities to, to see uh, how we can s support with a financial solution. We have done that for the resilient program uh, and uh, the, the Swedish government has done it when it comes to the lease solutions with Hungary and Czech Republic. So that's an opportunity to see what the customer wants. Uh, sometimes there is a need to spread out the cost and have an even cost each year uh, because of course there's an initial investment if you buy a, a setup for a complete program. So, so it's a flexibility there to, to look at those uh, sort of solutions jointly. So that was the last uh, question and answer. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming. I also want to thank all of you viewing us on the web. Uh, both Jakob and Ulf will be here a couple of more minutes in the room. So if you have uh, some questions uh, you want to take one to one, please, uh, please come up to Ulf and Jakob. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you.